Okay, let's take a look at programming in C with 123D circuits. So I've logged into my 123D circuits account. I'm going to start a new electronics lab. So what we're going to be doing is adding a microcontroller to an electronic circuit and then using C code to program that microcontroller. So I'm going to go new electronics lab and it's going to open up a window with a breadboard. Now, the breadboard is just something that we use for prototyping electronics. It's actually not going to be very necessary for the first few things that we do here. So here's my breadboard. But for the case of this program, because it's quite simple, I'm just going to delete that for now. So delete that component. I'm going to go to components, and we're going to find an Arduino. Now, the Arduino can be used as a little computer. We can program it using C, and it can read a series of inputs and outputs. So here's my Arduino Uno. I can click and drag that into my gray space here. You can see. Now, we're going to be working with robots, so let's find a motor, because first thing with any robot is that they've got motors. We've got a DC motor here, DC motor here, it should do the same thing. So there's one DC motor, and there's two DC motors. We'll turn off the components so we can see a little better what we're doing. If you look on each DC motor, we've got two wires, so terminal one, terminal two, and same on this one, terminal 1, terminal 2. We also have a gear that we can see driving. For now, we're going to imagine this is our robot. Now, if we look at the Arduino, you'll see that we've got squiggly lines on some of the pins. What those squiggly lines mean is that those pins are capable of an analog output, which we'll get back to later, but pretty much it just allows us to vary the speed of the motor. So we want to use those pins whenever we're using a motor. So I'm going to come from here, terminal 1, and plug a wire into the 11, terminal 2, plug a wire into the 10, terminal 1 on the second motor can go into 9, and terminal 2 on the second motor can go into 6. So I've got them all in those analog output pins. Zoom out, I can just move these around, you'll see that those wires will stay attached. Make it a little cleaner. So like that, we've got the two motors set up. So now that we've got the motors, we need to do a little bit of coding to make these motors work. So I can come here and I've got code editor. That's going to open up a script at the bottom. Now, by default, the script comes up that turns an LED on. So I've got my integer, LED equals 13. I've got it set as an output. And in my void loop, I have it turning on. And if there's no Go down a little more, you'll see that it, it turns off lower down. If I upload this, upload and run, you'll see that it starts flashing an LED on the board. So right there, it flashes the little LED. Now, we don't need this code, so we're going to delete some components of it and start using it as a framework. So there's our entire code. So pin 13 is an LED. Well, let's just get rid of those comments. I've got to go stop simulation. There it is, comments, and now we've got integer LED equals 15. Well, let's change what our integers are going to be. So I've got two motors and four motor pins. So I'm going to say motor capital P, motor pin 1 equals 11. That's where I plugged it in. Make sure to keep that semicolon in place. I'm going to control copy this line. Set up all four of my pins. I've got motor pin 2, which I plugged into 10. I've got motor pin 3, which I've plugged into 9. And I've got motor pin 4, that I've plugged into 8. You can see I've got all my motor pins set up. A couple different ways that we could go about writing this, but for now, we'll put four separate lines. And remember, when we're do working in C code, we always want to comment out what we're doing. So a double slash, this is pin one of the first motor. Slash. 
backslash pin two of first motor. You could label these right and left, but for now, we don't know where they're going to be yet, so we're just playing around. Uh, slash slash pin one of the second motor. And slash slash pin two of the second motor. Remember, we always want to have the comments, that way we know what we're doing. Now we've got our void set up down below here. We haven't really played with electronics yet using C code. We've only been using the console and code blocks. So down here under pin mode, we need to set up if a pin is going to be used as an output or an input. Now, because we're using four motors, all these pins are going to be, be outputs because we're sending a signal from our Arduino, our microcontroller, out to the motor. We're not getting anything back from that motor. So I can just cheat a little bit and go copy on this line. And we can add motor pin 1 as an output, motor pin 2 as an output, motor pin 3 and motor pin 4. So now all four of my pins are output. So this is just the setup. This runs one time when our program starts. Once that's happened, then we go into a void loop. And we talked about loops a little bit before, but when we're using an Arduino or a microcontroller for robotics, we've always got a loop running. So here you can see digital right, and this is our LED, LED on, or wait one second, LED off. Well, let's change this up a little bit, because now we want to work with motors. So let's say I want motor pin one, I want to turn motor pin 1 high. And I want motor pin 2. And I want motor pin 2 to be low. Now, the reason for making one motor pin 1 high and motor pin 2 low is because in order for a motor to work, one side of the motor has to be grounded and one side has to have a voltage. So the electric, the electric current can go through the motor and back to ground. So by doing that, we've made motor pin high, our voltage, and we've made motor pin low, our ground. So one is high volts, two is low for ground. Just make a comment here. Applying electricity to motor one. And in this case, is making motor pin two ground. Okay, so now I've got enough code there for one motor to work. It's my index there. Delay 1000, so it's a millisecond delay. And then we've got another digital right down here. I'm just going to Delete that for now, not important. And I'm going to take this line of code, control copy, control V, and I'm going to add this the second motor is going to work. So motor pin 3, motor pin 4. So same as the first one. And you can see I just got to change my comments a little bit. So that was 3, that was 4. So if we upload and run this, we should see those motors start turning. So if I look at my simulation, there we go, we've got the motor turning out for some reason. This one's not turning. Let's stop the simulation. Just to make sure it's plugged in properly, which it looks like it is. Check my code for that one. 
There's no problem. I said eight should have been six. Upload and run again. And now you can see both of my motors are turning. Stop simulation. And now we can go back and we can edit that code some more. So if you notice in this one, what's happening is both those motors, when they start, just keep spinning. They go and go and go. And now the reason for that is because those motors are in a loop. So I've got my void loop. The motors are turning on. It delays one second. And then the loop starts again. So at no point have I told these motors to stop. If I want the motors to stop, I would need to add another set of programming. Now, I'm just going to do this a little bulky. I don't have to do all four lines, but I'm going to anyway. Control copy, Control V. And you can see, I'll fix this in a second. You can see my code is getting just a little, a little big. But here, if I say low, and low, that's going to stop the program. Or sorry, stop the motors. Just change this to motor stop. So copy. And I'm going to comment out that on all the lines because we know now that this check of code is for the motor to stop. Now, I could have said set them all to high. That would also stop the motors, but rather not have them all high, just set them off the ground. Works a little better. Upload and run. You should see them start for one second, stop for a second, start, stop, start, stop, and they keep going. We can play around with this a little more. With a delay time, if we want it to go on longer, we can make the delay time longer. If we wanted to make it shorter, make the delay time shorter. Right, so that's going to be our first tutorial on programming motors with Arduino.